something if Wait, you want. They're, they're talking. What's your question? Can I ask a question? Yes, go on. What about a 16 years old girl who accidentally got pregnant and suddenly all of her life goes to trash because she can't have an abortion? Say again. What about a 16 years old girl who got pregnant and now because she can't have an abortion, all of her life got dumped in the trash? Right. So the question is, so the question is, well, actually, we got it recorded. So in answer to your question, sister, Sister. For, yes. Sister. Uh, anyway, so in answer, in answer to your question, in answer to your question, I believe that we are letting women down by putting them in a position where lots of them think that abortion is the only solution to the situation that they face. I think that if you argue for a pro-life position as I do, it's incumbent that you also argue for proper support for women who find themselves with unwanted pregnancy and that means real investment in those women including counselling, uh, uh, availability to adoption services, counselling again, financial support and to change the attitudes of any culture that would seek to shame or villainize them because they became pregnant. Okay, but do you understand? Okay. First, of, first of all, being pregnant for itself can ruin someone's like life in general yeah, because she can, it's really hard to be in school while you're pregnant. Not mention while you're in the hospital. So like you lose school and the girl is 16 years old while the embryo inside her body is not even alive yet. It, it doesn't alive. have an heartbeat. A heartbeat. A heartbeat doesn't define life. Okay. Is an amoeba alive? A what? Is an amoeba alive? Regardless of that. No, answer my question. I answered yours. Is an amoeba alive? Yes. Does an amoeba have a heartbeat? No. So heartbeats don't define what's alive. So let's not define a life. What about a sperm? That can create a baby yes, just like an embryo. Is every sperm sacred? No. So if a sperm is not sacred, why is an embryo sacred? So that can create life. So according to what you say, and if you, if you justify it using the Bible or whatever, then masturbation isn't allowed as well. So, so let me answer your question. Let's answer your question. First, so let me answer your question. Okay, can I just say one last thing? Yeah, go on. So every pro-lifer, you tell me that every pro-lifer doesn't masturbate. No, I'm not saying that. Okay. So, so now, let, now, let, now let me address your point, because the point is, I agree, if you argue for a pro-life position, I'll go further, I would say, I would say that it is incumbent upon the state to hold men equally responsible for the care of any children that we ask women to have. Men, if we're going to pass a law that says abortion is illegal, we should also pass laws we should also pass laws. We should also. James, James, calm down, bro. Calm down. So, Lays, so coming back to you, right? We should also pass laws that make it obligatory for men to provide for the care of the children that they help to create. It's got to be that way. Men can't get away scot free. If they get a woman pregnant, they are held responsible. Now, coming back to your 16-year-old. What if they're too poor? So, no, no, no. so uh, you'd listen. So, in terms of the 16-year-old that you just talked about, uh, pro-life society needs to invest in that 16-year-old to make sure that she receives a complete education, to make sure that if she can't decide to raise that child, her child can find its way to a loving family. Yes. To make sure yes. that she is fully counselled for any emotional consequence of these decisions yes. and to make sure that her career does, does not suffer for any of these decisions. A pro-life culture means that we have to support women and hold men as much responsible for the life that they create. Of First of all, some ladies, after they give birth, they can create depression. They can harm their body in multiple ways. You're taking a 60 years old girl's body and destroy it. And a woman that dropped out of school because she was pregnant and she couldn't keep going is not the same as a man who maybe have to stay there and support the kid but still can get to stay in school even if she catch up on her education later it harms your teenage life in general men making decision over women's body they do not understand the consequence of it no matter how much you read because you do not understand can i reply yes but second of all you did not answer my sperm question you did not legitimize how it is that an embryo Go, that still hasn't became a baby and can be 
developed into a baby, but clearly it's not a baby. I'll address them. I'll, I'll address both of those points. I'll, I'll answer those two points. So, I'll deal with the sperm question first. Let's talk sperm. Guys, let's talk masturbation. Right? Let, let, let's be clear. Right? <laughs> Never heard of it. Let, let's talk about sperm. I'm trying to answer the lady's question, Steve. I'm trying to answer the lady's question. Right. So, no, no, no. I'm going to address, the, no, I'm going to address those two points. So, first point. A sperm is not an embryo. An unfertilized egg is not an embryo. Pro-life Christians don't believe, do not believe, do not believe that life begins at sperm. We believe life begins at conception. So therefore, it is the embryo, the fertilized egg, that is sacred. So that answers that point. Second point, second point, second point. You asked about the 16-year-old and the consequences. The point that the, the point that the sister is making, she's trying to argue for a life without consequences. I'm sorry, but that is not the real world. In the real world, in the real world, you will always face consequences. And some of those consequences are that your feelings will suffer. That is a fact of life that you are going to endure whether you have an abortion or not. Arguments and appeals to emotionalism are invalid. And furthermore, if you're trying to argue for a consequence life where you never have to face depression, how many other things should we apply that logic to? How many other things shall we try to save people from suffering depression from because of the choices that they make? This is clearly a bad way to organize your life. Okay. So, first of all, regarding the sperm, even a fertilized egg is still technically a bunch of cells. Scientific it's alive. Scientifically. So sperm, I'm talking scientifically. I agree, it's still alive. Sperm is still technically alive if we count that the same thing. And wait, okay? Scientifically, it's still a bunch of cells that are only gonna probably to develop to be a baby. Yes. Okay? Now, girls do face the consequences after like they get pregnant because even an abortion is not such an easy thing for a girl to do. I know. Lots of them suffer depression because they have an abortion. But if but most But why aren't you trying to preserve them from that kind of depression wait, as well? Because if a girl wants to have a depression a, a de if a girl wants to have an abortion, the chance that you not letting her have an abortion is a bigger chance that she will develop uh, depression over that, over having an, abro an abortion. If you don't let a girl who wants to have an abortion have an abortion, there is a higher chance she will develop depression from that than simply having an abortion. Besides, wait, an abortion. Any statistics to back that up? Wait. <laughs> Logically, okay. I'm talking logic, okay. That was an, an appeal to an emotion. Okay, wait. Now, it's not that easy to have an emotion, also because it takes money and it's painful sometimes. Okay, and I'm saying it because girls do face the consequences. Girls do face the consequences, and in general, if a girl is having, if you, if a girl does decide to. Um, have sex and then she gets pregnant then obviously she has to face the consequences but that consequence can be an abortion you stopping the consequences will be easier on a 16 years old girl can I, can I or a 50 wait or a 15 years old girl so in general you're making their life harder even though they're just kids kids do make mistakes and a lot of times a lot of times you can make wait wait for all can you please tell all the people that are shouting behind you to be a bit quieter so we can have a proper discussion. I would love to have a proper conversation, okay, but reply. I can't control these people. Okay. So the point that the point that I would say to you, the point that I would say to you is that there's no way of getting around consequences. What we need to be teaching people is responsibility. Now the reality is people are always going to make mistakes. So we stick sticking with this 16 year old girl as our example. I would believe that we need to teach people to burden and to take on the responsibility of their actions and I believe that that falls just as much on men who get away scotch-free at the moment they get away scotch-free because they get a girl pregnant she's the one that suffers with the hard choices 
She's the one that suffers with the depression and the consequences, whether she has an abortion or not, because both ways lead to depression and both ways lead to consequences. And the guys get away with it. And I think that needs to stop. I think men, if you get a girl pregnant, the state should force you in some way within the limits defined by the woman to care for her child. Now, you're essentially arguing that we shouldn't let people face the consequences of their actions. That is a bad way to organize society. You can't protect everyone all of the time from the consequences of their actions. What you can do is when they, if you create a climate of responsibility and someone makes a mistake, step in to help them. We are creating an abortion culture. We're creating an abortion culture because we're trying to escape from consequence. It's a bad way to organize our culture. It's a bad way to organize society. I agree with you that a 16 year old gets pregnant without people to back her up. She needs help. I am arguing that the best kind of help that she should receive is the one that makes sure in a pro-life culture that her life can continue with the baby or if she gives it up for adoption, right? Now, you, you mentioned about the sperm, the sperm being alive. I agree with you, a sperm cell is alive, but a sperm cell can't be a human being. Technically it can, once it's fertilized an embryo. Exactly, and that's the difference, and that is exactly the difference. No, that is, that is egg like, no, no. The moment, the moment the egg, the moment the egg is conceived, the moment it is fertilized, it has a unique genetic code that is different from its father and its mother. That means that there is an a, a, a ontological, categorical and qualitative difference between a fertilized egg and a sperm or an unfertilized egg. They are not the same thing.